Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today's video is going to be about all the power or energy that's built up within a radio control car as it's traveling along. Where does it end up? Where does all that power and energy go? Well, you can imagine taking an on-road vehicle that weighs over 12 pounds traveling at speeds over 100 miles an hour down an open road has a lot of built up energy and that must end up somewhere when we go ahead and slam those brakes on and if we don't have good brakes that radio control car might end up in the next city or at least out of visual range for us to control it now i've created this sort of design that allows me to connect two brushless motors together, one that can be driven and the other that can act as the brake. And the way that I've done it is I have a couple pinion gears that is located on each one of these motors and they're connected together so that they're engaged. Let's take a look at the rest of all the components that we'll be using today. Here are all the components that we're going to be using today in the video. In the bottom center section of our screen, we can see the driving motor. This is the motor that's responsible for delivering all of the mechanical power to our system. The driving motor has a pinion gear that is connected to the output shaft and this pinion gear is mated with a larger pinion gear found on the motor doing all of the braking for us. This is providing the brake resistance against our system. Now back to the driving motor, this is connected to a speed control that has a signal input coming from the receiver that is just off to the right of our screen. The speed control on the power input side also has a watt meter that is connected to it. Now from here, the watt meter goes straight to the battery that we can just barely see in our screen. This is a four cell lithium polymer battery that is applying all the power that we're going to be using today. Now the reason why we use a watt meter is we want to know how much power that we're sending off to our system. We don't wanna go and flood the system with too much power and then start breaking things. I have identified through a bunch of earlier experiments that we can only apply about 180 watts to be on the safe side. I also know that the system without any braking action consumes about 45 watts. This is just running the motor up at speed without having any brakes applied. The subtraction between how much power that we're actually using in the system at the time that we have the brakes applied, subtracting out the amount of power that it takes to spin the motor is how much power actually goes to the braking efforts. That's going to be about 130 watts for our experiment. Now back to our driven motor. This motor is also connected to a speed control and it also has the sensor wire that runs from the motor to the speed control. This is so that we are able to capture the temperature data to see if any, there's any difference there in temperature. The speed control that we're connected to, it's going to be applying the brakes and it also is going to be recording all of the data for us for temperature and time. Temperature of the speed control, temperature of the motor over the time period that we operate it for. The speed control is simply connected up to another four cell battery that is just there to power it and that's just about it. Now let's take a look at exactly what happens when we spin up the motor and start applying the brakes on the opposing motor. We want to identify exactly where that power ends up.
Now we know that a lot of the power is ending up in both the brushless motor as well as our speed control. Now let's dig into exactly why and how all that works. Well, the best way to do it is to simply take one of our brushless motors. Now what I've done to this motor is I've connected every single one of the leads, I've shorted them out to another lead. And the reason why I've done this is because this is exactly what a speed control in one of your vehicles is doing. It may not be a direct short, but it's gonna act as some form of resistance that's gonna act in this sort of way. Now what we can do is as we have all of these leads shorted, we're gonna experience the most amount of braking action that this motor can provide for us. If I go and slowly rotate the motor, I don't really feel all that much. It doesn't seem like there's any sort of braking action that's occurring here. But if I really try and spin it as fast as I can rotate it, I can start to begin to feel that resistance. And that resistance is quite significant. It wants to resist any type of motion as long as I'm traveling and rotating it relatively quickly. And that's a key point for electric type brakes that we're seeing in our radio controlled applications. At very slow speeds, there's not much braking action, but as you rotate faster and faster, that resistance increases. Once we take those leads all off the brushless motor and then we go and spin it, we can see that there's very little resistance there now acting on the motor. The brakes are essentially removed. Now what's interesting about these types of speed controls, especially this one here, is that it comes right from the factory at a default of around 50% braking capacity. The interesting part is that it is at 50% instead of something like 100%. Now the reason that might be true is that at 100% braking potential, there's a lot of brake torque that you can actually extract from the motor, so much that you could probably lock the wheels up on just about any vehicle. And that for the most part is going to be in excess of what we need. It's gonna to be too much. So what happens is, you dial that back so you don't have that much braking force. Typically in many of my vehicles, I'm down to about 20 to 30% of the total amount of braking force that you can get out of these speed controls. And the reason why that's important is as soon as you introduce resistance into the braking circuit, that is where you can have heat building up in the entire system. For example, the motor that we have, doesn't matter what motor you're using, as it's rotating, it has a certain resistance within it. And that resistance is pretty well based on the speed that the motor is rotating at. Then you have the resistance that the speed control is going to apply in order to slow the system or your car down. Power is going to be dissipated in the form of heat over those resistances. And as long as you have some sort of resistance that could even be in the wires that goes from your brushless motor right into the speed control, power is going to be dissipated in all of those components. And it's going to be proportional to whatever component has the most amount of resistance. Now, based on the studies and what I've done to experiment, I found that it seems the motor is absorbing more of the power, but that doesn't mean that it's absorbing all the power. As we saw, that speed control is also heating up. So the speed control is producing a resistance that is also giving off heat. In conclusion, what we've identified is that that power that we have produced through the driven motor, all that power gets dissipated from the entire braking circuit that was involved in our system. That includes the brushless motor, as well as the leads that run from the motor to the speed control, and lastly, the speed control. All of these components are going to heat up. And which one heats up most is gonna be based on whatever one has the highest amount of resistance. If I would have pressed harder on the brakes and also had a higher percentage of braking power that was programmed into the speed control, I would expect that the motor would then produce the most amount of heat and give off the most amount of power. And that is because the speed control at a higher braking threshold would have a lower resistance, closer to that dead short that we saw with all the wires on here. Zero resistance is going to provide zero heat in theory. That pretty well does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed creating this video. Smash the like button if in fact you like the video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next one. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Monday.